So this week I did my first ever pet photography shoot. Actually, I did my first seven. In this video, I'm talking about how it went and if pet photography is for me. Hey friends, I'm Danny Jack and welcome to my channel. I'm a wedding photographer based in the UK, but for obvious reasons, which you might be able to guess, I haven't been able to shoot as many weddings this year as I would like. So I thought I would try my hand at a genre of pet photography I've not really given a go before, but I've always wanted to do, and that is pet photography. I don't really know why I haven't tried it in the past. Um, I don't know if it's because I didn't feel like I had enough time or I had the contacts or because I didn't know dogs super well. Like I have a dog and I know how to look after my dog relatively well, uh, but I didn't know how exactly like dog behavior, that kind of stuff. But I've always wanted to give it a go. It's always been one of those things that just looks super fun. I've not actually known that many of the photographers who do it in the area, so that might also be a reason why I haven't given it a go. But with weddings off the table, I thought no better time than now to give it a try. So I tried it out and I did seven shoots. I'll be honest with you, I didn't really know what I was doing or how <laughs> how exactly it works. I don't know that much about the world of pet photography. I don't know any famous pet photographers, for example. But I thought, you know, just give it a go, get started, try it out and make some mistakes and figure it out as I go along. So that's what this video is all about. I'm going to be talking about my experience with the shoots, some lessons I've learned along the way. And if you find any of this stuff helpful, um, please press like. I'd really appreciate it. Um, let's get into it. So first things first, I had to figure out how to actually get started in pet photography. Um, most people know me as a wedding photographer, like my Instagram is just basically wedding photography, and I've never really talked about being a pet photographer before. So it was there wasn't really an audience for me to kind of start with. There wasn't really anyone I could immediately sell to. Fortunately, lots of people do have pets, so there is that. But I wasn't known for pet photography at the time, and I'm you know still not. It's a week later, but yeah, I, I kind of had to start fresh. So I thought I would turn to some local Facebook groups. There are tons of Facebook communities out there for dog lovers, for cat lovers, for pet lovers in general, um, based on different areas, based on different breeds of dogs. Uh, and a lot of them do allow people to pop in and you know promote their products or their services. So actually I thought this was a pretty easy way for me to kind of get in there and kind of talk to people who are most likely to want to book a dog shoot. I found a really good group in my area and I was just really honest about it. I just said, you know, hey, I'm a wedding photographer. I haven't got that many weddings to shoot at the moment. I was always thinking about starting pet photography and I would love to do some shoots and do some shoots with your with your dogs if you want to volunteer your time. And I gave them, you know, a very, very cheap rate for a session fee. So I said, look, the shoot will essentially be free. But if you want to purchase any prints or downloads afterwards, then you're more than welcome. But no worries either way, because it helps me out. It helps me figure out how to learn the craft helps me figure out how to do things like pricing and marketing for dog photography and editing and all these things I haven't really done in this world before and um, so it was kind of a win-win really. I also put a couple of pictures up of my own dog just to <laughs> let people know kind of what to expect you know that I'm not completely incompetent behind the camera even though I haven't really done dog photography in the past. And I'm actually pretty amazed at the result, uh, how many people were interested um, in getting a shoot done. It was it was really, really cool. They were really excited. I don't know if it's because of recent lockdown conditions and people just wanting something to do, but everyone wanted to get outside, everyone wanted to do some shoots, uh, which was awesome. There was actually more than I could possibly do at the rate I was doing it for. So um, I did some at a cheaper rate and then I kind of put prices up for people a little bit later on down the line. But before I knew it, yeah, I had uh, seven shoots booked in for a week, which was really cool uh, to go from nothing to seven so quickly. People were just super up for it. I gave everyone interested a Candly link so that they could book in a session with me, kind of based around some predetermined times that I was wanting to do a shoot. Um, yeah, and people just kind of went for it. So that was really cool. It was also great for all these different shoots where dogs that were completely different, you know, in terms of their breed and their personality. Um, you know, their ages, and there's puppies and older dogs. So it's a really good opportunity for me to get a well-rounded experience of the different kind of dogs I might expect if this is a career I want to pursue down the line. So I'm just going to hop over onto the computer, have a look at some of my favorite photos I took this week and kind of talk through my experiences and some lessons I learned. Okay, so this shoot is with Marshall the uh, Tamascan, I believe. One of the first things I need to do when I'm getting into pet photography is learn all the names of all the dog breeds. Uh, this is a really cool shoot uh, with a really cool couple of owners as well who were very kind enough to volunteer Marshall's time. Uh, Marshall was just like super obedient, so this was like probably one of the easiest shoots of all of them. Um, he would sit and chill um, without re really needing to do anything, which was which was really nice. Um, and he would always look at the camera. And one thing I learned from um, from the shoot with Marshall is that like lots of dogs will have like specific words that they are going to react to. You know, what to put their ears up or to lean their heads, that kind of thing. And for Marshall, I was just mentioning like his friends' names. <laughs> he has some dog friends he's friends with. Uh, so we just did that, and that managed to get like that cool like head tilt kind of thing. 
Um, one really cool thing we did with Marshall is that we found this great little um, like water spot where he could run in the water and he could like jump over logs and stuff, which was pretty epic. Um, that's another thing I'm going to kind of remember for these pet shoots, just to kind of find some some really cool locations where the dogs can play and and you know really you know be dogs and <laughs> you know just uh, do their thing and have a, you know have a great time. And then this next shoot is with Alfie the Lab. So Alfie is a bit of an old boy. Um, he was a lovely, lovely dog, great to have, have a play with. But um, because he was a bit older, uh, he was a little bit deaf. Um, he kind of just wanted to do his own thing. Uh, he still had very much like a puppy mentality, which was, was really fun and he just wanted to play. Um, but in terms of like commands and stuff like that, like he, he, he wasn't really up for it, which is totally cool. Like I think that was really nice. Um, he, we actually kept him on the lead for the entire shoot. So I had to have some good practice at editing out leads in this one, um, which was, yeah, good good experience for me because I hadn't really done much of that before. Um, and I kind of learned that like, you know, positioning of a lead is really important that, for that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I managed to get some stuff and it was a lot of kind of doing it Alfie's way, I suppose, which I think is how a lot of these shoots are gonna go. Uh, and then I had another Alfie who was a lab retriever cross, um, who was great fun. Um, this shoot was a little bit different as well because we went to a place I wouldn't have picked probably myself. It was quite a crowded park, um, you know, with lots of kids, that kind of stuff. But this was one that uh, the owner knew Alfie was really comfortable in. Um, so actually maybe it was better just to kind of trust the owner's judgment. Um, but yeah, I should really get to know the locations before we go to these shoots. Um, Alfie was super smiley, super happy, um, very obedient as well, would do anything for a treat. So Alfie was one of those dogs, which um, I guess was had more of a treat drive, which was cool, um, made him really, really playful um, and super happy. Uh, yeah, and I'm really happy with these shots. Um, I probably should have got more like interacting shots in terms of him like walking and standing, that kind of stuff. Um, but we did get some cool jumping shots and we got lots of sitting and smiley happy Alfie. Um, I realised that like it's important for me to get like both close and far away with these shots to get as much variety as possible because you know obviously the more variety I can deliver um, then the better it will be for the client as well. So yeah, but uh, overall really happy with these ones as well. So, of course, I don't want to play favourites, but I may have enjoyed this shoot with Brandy the Beagle the most, just because he was such a young dog, like such a pup, um, but he was still, you know, so well behaved as well. So, um, you know, he was doing incredibly cute things, but he would sit and he would lie down like really easily. So we could get through a lot of shots really quickly. In fact, this is probably one of the shortest shoots we did. which happened to be in a location as well, where we could kind of go to a barn and like shoot using the barn as well, which made things um, pretty cool as well. Um, found some great locations. He was great at running, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and we found this, I think probably my favorite photo I've taken so far in pet photography of, is of this, um, this beautiful little road we just spotted um, with Brandy just happening to look in a cool direction at the right time. Um, and yeah, it was great fun having some shots with him like playing in the straw and you know letting him be a puppy as well, um, which was great. Um, yeah, it was, it was probably quite a lot of hard work because he was very, very active. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one too. Um, yeah, it's good to have uh, do a puppy shoot in these seven shoots. And then this next shoot is with Lisa, who was a rescue dog from Romania. Um, this was one I also learned a lot from, uh, mainly because um, she didn't immediately trust me. She was originally a little bit nervous and she kind of just wanted to do her own thing. But then she kind of really opened up um, and I kind of just let her play. I didn't push it too much. And you know, she got a little bit more curious. She kind of just wanted to have like a bit of a play and she never like completely warmed up to me throughout the entire shoot. Um, but you know, she was a happy dog when she was just doing her thing. Um, and you know, got a few really nice smiles in there as well. Um, and yeah, she was just a really funny dog and she would just start off randomly when she wanted to or she would just lie down and chill whenever she wanted to do as well. So this was definitely one of those shoots where I just kind of allowed her to do her thing and then just captured that. And then these last two shoots were actually taken at the same time um, because I had the same owner, but they were two different dogs. Um, one of them is Reggie and one of them is Ronnie, and I can't remember which one is which, um, so please forgive me there. But there is a Reggie and there is a Ronnie. Um, I think this guy might be Reggie, I think, possibly Ronnie, but... So uh, let's call him Reggie anyway. So Reggie um, was the uh, Jack Russell, and he was um, a lot of fun as well. Um, just kind of wanted to play, kind of wanted to do his thing, um, so we kind of like just sort of got him to sit there. Like this one, um, one thing I have learned is that um, the first five minutes is very much figuring out like, do I sort of let the owner kind of run the obedience side of things or do I kind of take control and do I do the commands? And uh, Reggie was one of those ones where the owner would get him to sit or to stand or whatever. And then I would just basically just do something to get his attention once he was in the right place, uh, which worked really well. I really like this one where he almost looks like a lion sort of like looking over the Sahara. I think that's pretty cool. 
And then next I had Ronnie. Uh, so Ronnie was a very barky dog. Um, he was very vocal, uh, which is totally cool. Like he was a lovely, lovely dog. Um, but yeah, he was barking a lot. So I had to be pretty quick in terms of getting the shots where he was not barking, um, where he was looking pretty curious. I kind of love this one, this little toothpick in his mouth, um, which I think is probably just a bit of straw he found. And he had to be on his lead as well. Um, so, so one lesson I sort of learned is that he had a slip lead and I probably should just say to owners, don't use slip leads because they're really hard to edit um, and just have a lead which you can kind of put onto uh, the collar if possible and that's a lot easier for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I'm really happy with some of the stuff I got with him. Um, we kind of had to get him to warm up and then it wasn't until I realized how much he was into like the squeak of a tennis ball, um, but I managed to get the best shots. Like that is really what got his ears perking up. So again, it was learning that like the first five minutes or 10 minutes of a shoot is basically just figuring out how you can get the attention of a dog, um, what his distractions are, that kind of stuff, and like how you can get him to, to do what it is you'd like him to do in the shoot. Um, but yeah, he was a very happy dog as well. Um, and yeah, got some stuff I'm happy with here as well. So then we also have Vinny. Vinny was like a great, really easy shoot as well because he's super trained. Um, I actually don't know what dog Vinny is. I can't remember the name, um, but yeah, he was super obedient. Um, one of those dogs kind of trained for security, so I really knew how to like listen to his owner. And again, his owner was sort of in charge of putting him in the place where he needed to be, and then I was just getting his attention from there. So from a shooting perspective, like I found it was really helpful for me to find mostly shaded areas. This was like on a really sunny day, and I didn't really want to be shooting out in the sun, so I found like some semi-shaded areas where it had a nice dark background, but possibly with some sun kind of coming in through the leaves, and I found that was like a really nice way to get out a nice bokeh effect. Um, I do this all the time in wedding photography as well, um, but yeah, I found it was really good for for pet photography. Those are the results from the seven shoots uh, with eight dogs that they did this week and I have to say like I'm pretty proud of uh, what I've done like it being the very first step and I know that this is like the first step and there are tons more steps I need to go on this is like very much the start um, I can't really call myself a pet photographer yet but I have got a somewhat of a portfolio now um, and I can use that to get myself more bookings and I can continue on this journey and it's all quite exciting like I I'm enjoying like starting something new I've been doing wedding photography for quite a long time now and I absolutely love it but it's cool to kind of be at the starting point again because pet photography is quite different to wedding photography in terms of marketing and sales and that kind of Kind of stuff i know that there's a lot for me to learn so i'm gonna make sure i pay attention to those who have walked this path before me you know uh, maybe take a workshop at some point or do some classes so i can learn as much as possible the same way i learned when i was getting started in wedding photography with wedding photography uh, i basically just shoot the wedding and give them the pictures and i'm not that fussed on how many prints i sell after the wedding that's kind of just a bonus but with dog photography and pet photography it's kind of the whole thing so i had to put more attention into that so for that reason i decided to switch from shoot proof which is my normal online gallery over to pick time which is sort of more focused towards that after sales and in-person sales in-person sales digital sales post shoot sales uh, stuff um, and it's worked really well and I found that people were more receptive than maybe they would have been with shoot proof. I'm going to do a video at some point of the differences between shoot proof and pick time so if you're interested in that also press subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified when that is ready. All in all I had a great time doing these shoots. Um, I would love to carry these on even when weddings are back to normal and I'm quite busy during the summer I would love to still do some pet photography. It will probably never be as an important part of my business as the weddings are but it's a lovely bit of fun. Um, I really enjoy getting outside and you know doing some some dog photos and meeting all these lovely dogs. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. So I'm probably still going to carry it on even if I don't make that much money from it. Don't get me wrong; like I would like to make some money from it, please. Uh, but yeah, I don't mind either way. Um, it's all good, and I'm just going to keep learning. Uh, so that is my first week in pet photography and the things I learned along the way. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, uh, press like or press subscribe or the bell icon to see more videos like this one. Or if you've been doing pet photography for a while, uh, yeah, please feel free to leave something in the comments. Let me know um, what you have been learning yourself or some tips that you might have for me, some resources, because I'm on the lookout for that kind of thing. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for checking out this channel as it's in its baby stages. Um, it's really awesome. So remember, press the bell icon and you will see it when that comes out. Okay, that is it for me, guys. Thank you once again. See you next week.